Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. In this video I'm going to show another map entity that I haven't explained yet. Um, and it is this one. Blocks. So a block is something that the hero will be able to either push or pull or both. So I double click the block. I can customize its sprite. By default it's entities slash block which happens to be exactly the a link to the past usual block if you have the resource pack for Zelda a link to the past but you can use any other sprite. You can customize the number of possible moves. Uh, for now it can be zero one or unlimited, but um, in one point in Solaris one point six, it will be possible to customize this more to put any value actually. For now, it's only zero, one, or unlimited, and you can also decide if you want to allow to push or to pull or both. Okay, so this is a block that I can only push and only one time and in in any or any direction because you can also customize the allowed directions oh <laughs> i'm not in the correct map F just forgot that when i was preparing for this episode okay so i can push it only once and it's over So, to push the block you have to, um, let, let's put unlimited, you have two, two choices actually, you can either walk to the direction on the block and wait uh, half a second and it gets pushed, then you can push several times, or you can also just press the action key, which is space by default space and I can immediately push. It's slightly faster. And to pull a block, if you allow this, you have to press space to grab the block first and then you go to the opposite direction. So this is a block that I can, I can both push and pull. And you can also restrict the the movement in only one direction if you want, for example up. So this one can be pushed or pulled but can only go to the north. So push like this, pull like this, but not like this, not like this. Okay. So most of the time when you, I mean in A Link to the Past when you have a block that can be both pushed and pulled, you will use the statue sprite actually. So this is the typical A Link to the Past statue. So in Solaris, statues are actually particular blocks. The only difference is the sprite. And then you can make all sorts of puzzles, for example, um, a switch, a workable switch, but that can only be activated with, uh, where is it, switch, with a block. So. If I try to activate it with the hero, it doesn't work. And if I push the statue on it, it works. So it has no effect because we haven't scripted anything, but it works. And then you can also decide that the sa the uh, block, I mean the switch, deactivates when leaving.
when whatever was activating it leaves so it actually activates and de de deactivates let's try to script something function switch on activated secret and for example we can enable oops this one enable a chest a treasure chest this is tutorial number 27 I think I save the state of the chest in some variable okay and when the map starts I have to give a name to the chest so when the map starts if the chest is not open yet then I disable it I hide it I forgot then and switch on activated actually it's only if not chest is open and chest set enabled true and maybe you want to make the chest disappear when the statue leaves and by the way it should be this sound chest appears so there is another event you can check the documentation Ch switch on inactivated because the switch does deactivate when leaving okay so if the chest is not open yet I actually hide it again and it, sh it should just work okay good and last detail when we leave the map and we come back if the chest was open the first time uh, then let me show you the problem you found a heart go back so the switch should appear activated and the status should be on the switch already so if chest is open then switch set activated true and statue set position eighty eight one hundred and forty one and there is an else here okay I think it should be enough and by the way if I leave the map right now and I come back everything is reset it's only when the chest was open that I remember something oh something is wrong yes statue is a nil value of course I forgot to give this block a name statue let's try And also if I just leave like this, okay, it still works. You should also test what happens if I leave now. So the um, sprite of the switch appears inactivated 
actually because the switch really inactivates so this is a small bug we will fix it okay but this works okay so to fix this last bug we can say actually um, as soon as we open um, how can we do that actually yes if the chest is open we can lock the switch in the activated state so there is a function set locked to do that it's a bit tricky because we also have to to lock the switch when the chest gets opened chest unopened could do chest unopened lock the switch here but actually as soon as you, as you define this event it means that you customize what happens when opening the chest so unfortunately you won't get an, the treasure anymore okay so you have to explicitly give the treasure with hero start treasure all of this Okay, okay, this should be a string. Too bad. So it's a bit trickier than I thought. It was supposed to be a tutorial about. Ah, oh, this treasure is already found. It's already saved at this point, but. Okay, you found a heart. And now the switch is locked. <laughs> okay, it's a bit more complicated to make this example work exactly as I wanted. But um, it should give you an idea. And the important thing of this video is um, that blocks can be customized you can customize the sprite you can even use an in, uh, a non-playing character sprite, why not? just for fun or maybe for a mini game or I don't know this is still a block <laughs> and what else? I, I implemented the the cane of Samaria in Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX. You can check how the the cane of Samaria item script works, but the basic idea is to create dynamically, so from from the Rua script of the cane of Samaria, to create to dynamically create a block with the specific sprite. And then the the player can move can push or pull the, the Samaria block. And to do this, uh, the main function I use is uh, map create block. Actually, for all types, 
for any type, for every type of entity, there is a, the corresponding creation function to create it dynamically. Create block. So this one is created by the quest editor, but uh, sometimes you you create entities completely dynamically. Um, okay, well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to ask any question about blocks. And see you next time. Bye.